Hi everyone, welcome back to another Blender modeling tutorial. This week we're going to attempt this Indian Scout Bobber front pulley guard. And I've modeled this before. I'm working on the Indian Scout Bobber motorcycle with Toby Pittman. We're just doing it as a personal project. And I thought it'd be fun to recreate this. I did attempt it again this week and hopefully found the most optimal way to model it. If you see something that we could be doing better, just leave a comment and everyone can learn from it. But for now, let's just get started with a new project. General, I'm going to go into top view. You'll find the reference image in the description. Just click and drag it in. Alt G just to center that. I've put a crosshair in here and we're going to use that as a guide. So hitting G and X, just bring that across to world center so that's lined up. And the circles we're about to create will be created at the 3D cursor. So before we do anything else, let's just come over to our object data properties and just switch off perspective. And what else? We need to turn on opacity. Just drop this to 0.5 or whatever you prefer. Come up and make sure that selectable is checked. And just turn that off. Just so we don't move this around by accident. Okay, cool. So first thing I'm going to do before I create anything is come up and just turn off the grid for a moment. Okay. So shift A, circle. We want 16 verts. And we want a radius of 0.88 and a fill type of triangle fan. Shift space just to show the wireframe. Let's make another one. Shift A, circle. This is going to be 12. This is going to be 0.55. Okay. And just make sure that one's selected. Hit G and just bring this across and line this up. Now, this isn't perfectly symmetrical. You could work in symmetry if you want to. I decided not to with this. Obviously this section here is not symmetrical with this either. So if you did work in symmetry, you're going to have to pull out this bottom section a little bit more and also, you know, adjust these, but we're not going to do symmetry for this one. Okay. Select both of these control J to join them both together into one object and tab. Just deselect this one with select box. And we're going to inset this. Just go Alt C so we can see X ray mode. There is a line that goes around here. I want to inset that to line that up with that. Maybe something like that. That'll do. Now we'll select in face mode this one and these ones. X delete faces. All right. Alt Z. So now we're going to join these together and we'll start with the poly build tool. And this is the vanilla way to do it or one of the ways to do it. And then I'm going to move on to the poly quilt tool and you'll find a link in the description because I prefer the poly quilt tool. All right. So poly build select and click and drag that out. We need to have auto merge vertices turned on and we need to have vertex snapping on. Okay. So grabbing that vertex, Control click and control click. And because we have auto merge vertices on, they're now welded together. So same for here. Control click, control click. If you want to delete, you can hold down the shift key, click and delete. So you can go ahead and use the poly build tool if you want to. I'm going to use the poly quilt tool. And drag out my polygons. I can actually turn off auto merge vertices because the tool has that built in. line these up bring this one out to here something like that just gonna bring that one out a little bit further than the guide image because we're going to drop this into a subdivision surface and line these up a little bit later And there's more than one way to do this. Obviously you could have extruded this all the way across and then just added some cuts in. I kind of like using the poly quilt tool. It's pretty fast. 
make sure we can see everything. So line that one up with that. Let me bring this one back a bit. Like that. And one more. Okay. All right, so that's pretty much that side done. So go ahead and do this side and I'll meet you back here in a moment. Okay, so welcome back. I've gone ahead and added in all of the faces down the bottom here. Just making sure that things are fairly straight. Just using the loop tools add-on G stretch. Just making sure that spread is selected. You could also use the forgotten tool straighten, which I've mentioned in another tutorial. And just make sure things are spaced pretty well. You could also use loop tool space for that. So now we're ready to add in a few more cuts. So control R, add in two loops there. Control R, two loops there. Just to even those out a little bit. Select this edge and this edge. Shift B to bridge. And we want to add a couple of cuts in there. One, two, three. Make sure smoothness is zero and that interpolation is set to linear. There you go. And grab this one. It's going to move this back on the X and these two and just move these back like that. Just to round this out. Probably grab these two. Them like that. Something like that. I'll click on this loop. I've got grid fill in my quick favorites, so you could use control F and fill that up. Okay, so now we're ready to add the extrusion in this area here. I tried a few things during the week to see if I could find the most optimum way to do that. And if you select these and just press E and scale that up, it's, it's okay, it works, but it's a little bit of work to fix that. I'm just going to undo that. Make sure I haven't Got an extra loop there. Okay, I'm going to just select these ones. I'm going to do this in sections. So we could press E there and extrude out or right click and then scale. That still doesn't work. What I found worked really well was the extrude along normals tool. Just grab that and there we go. Just what we need. Probably about there. So that's good. Let's do these ones now. Control click. E to extrude. I'm going to extrude up and rotate. Just get this into generally the right position. Something like that. All right, so now quickly going to grab the poly quilt tool and just grab this vert here if I can. I'll just pull this one back across. And just join those up like that. All right, so we need to pull this back in line. And you could do them one by one, I guess. Let's have a look at a maybe a better way to do this. Got to be in line with this edge. So we'll come up and we'll click on the plus, And that'll create a custom orientation in line with that edge. Shift click to select the rest. And shift click back on this one. So that's the active edge. And we're going to make that active element like that. And you can see what we're going to do. You could use the scale tool if you want to, or you could just press S, Y, and scale back. And that's actually scaling them inwards. We don't want to do that. So let's go one, shift, shift, and try that again. S, Y, uh, that's what we want. There we go. Perfect. Let's try that for the bottom one. Two, E, make sure we come all the way down. Gonna rotate around the active, so we just bring that back around like that. Okay, we might as well do this while we're at it. So one, shift, shift. Now we haven't, <laughs> we haven't got the right orientation there, have we? So let's just select that one first. Come up and get rid of that one. Plus again, much better. So 
control one shift shift and let's use the scale tool this time so we just scale it on the y like that very nice okay we can get rid of that custom orientation now it doesn't screw us later and we just got to join these together so i could go click click and then m and then merge at last like that excellent let's save and i just save over this one here now we're ready to extrude this out and we're going to do this in sections control alt control i to invert the selection all right so let's go into front orthographic just come back and turn on our grid and we're going to pull this up make sure increments turned on and pull this up one just like that now we'll select the rest and pull it down well not actually all the rest just this edge around here have to allow for the belt to go through here if you were doing the rest of the bike which is what I did okay so selecting that and we're going to go E for extrude hit the Z key and come down to there so that's eight increments so that leaves some space for the belt to come through okay next hide that grid again make sure whoops sometimes I forget to have the right selection tool selected select that alt C we're going to bring in a loop here just by hitting I about right there and now we've got to extrude this one down now bring our grid back I love the grid I hate the grid so we're going to bring this down probably two increments one two that should be okay it's probably deep enough you can make it more shallow or deeper depending on what you like seems pretty good okay so now we have to select this section here and we're going to bring this down in stages just grab my selection circle and just quickly just paint these in all right now we don't need this top one or this bottom one so I'll quickly just get rid of those by holding control alt and shift same for this one all right so now we've got to pull these ones down and we're going to bring them down to about half one of these units so it's about minus 0 0.05 like that now we've got to deselect the next loop so control alt and shift and we'll do the same again to there nice and lastly we have to grab this little section in here we've got to bring that one down and that comes down a little bit deeper so it's about minus 0.1 about there so it's pretty much in line with that one if you wanted to use um, increments and snap those all right so that's all of the extrusion done really important that you get the order of extrusion right so sometimes it takes a bit of trial and error if you don't get the right order then you may get the result in the end but it could take longer or you may not be able to get it looking exactly like it's supposed to okay so to select this one we're going to round this one out control B roll the mouse wheel and just eyeball this something like that we'll say 0.1 maybe a little bit more that'll do face mode select these I to inset 
and we're going to delete those X delete faces just using the machine tools delete pie there link in the description select those and grid fill just use the offset to straighten that up like that so that's nicely rounded now so that's basically done now we need to start preparing to put in these insets at the top and the bottom now I've noticed that my edge there is not totally straight and even though the reference image is slightly curved I prefer this straight just going to just straighten those you could use forgotten tools straighten or once again loop tools G stretch straighten those got to do it for the bottom as well it's always good to do these when the geometry is flat but no harm no foul in this particular case okay that's pretty good so we need to put an extra loop in here and we'll also put one through here like that all right so now we need to line up some of these edges to make sure that we get this in the right place so if we have a look at the top select that edge and just use GG to slide that back Maybe before we do that just control R just add another loop in there we might use that one instead and control R and that one in there okay that's good all right so once again select that loop EG most important one is this one getting that pretty much in the center of that circle EG something like that okay so next we need to add in a loop control R just add that in the middle there by hitting the right mouse button and select this vertex right here and what we need to do is create a cylinder at that vertex and knowing that new objects are created at the 3d cursor means we have to move the 3d cursor to that vertex and we also need to align the 3d cursor with the normals of these faces because that's going to put our cylinder right in the right place at the right orientation so coming up to the snap settings what we want is vertex and closest and align rotation to target shift right mouse button hold down control and snap it's not perfectly aligned I'm going to try that again shift snap there we go that's now lined up and it's ready for us to create our new cylinder so tab shift a cylinder and the settings you'll need are 8 verts radius of 0.2 depth of 1 and a rotation of 0 and that's right in the right place a couple of these edges are too close that's fine we're going to fix that up later let's start by just hitting tab and control R click right mouse button just to center that we're going to need that one in a minute might just grab these select this one and grab these slide them out a bit same with these like that this one's obviously not in the right place but we'll fix that one up in a moment so now we need to boil these together so tab and I'm going to use the bull tool add-on you can turn that on in your preferences it's a free add-on that comes with blender and we need a union for this so shift click this one union all right that's all we need to do now we need to delete a few faces so let's see here three I'm gonna grab these delete those and these these ones we're going to reverse their normals so flip normals I've got mine in my quick favorites there okay that's good we can get rid of these ones 
And we can get rid of that one. Just want to select these edges here. Come into our top view here. Going to line these up. So just going to check my settings again. I want to turn off align rotation to target. And hold down control and snap that in line with that there. Okay, now select this one here. Same again. Hold down control and snap. There we go. Look, nice and neat. See, now we can sort this one out. And we'll do that in just a moment. First of all, what we'll do is we'll select all and we'll go M to merge and merge by distance and see if that has gotten rid of vertices. Yeah, 12 vertices. Just checking everything else to make sure nothing else is messed up. That's pretty much done it. So just going to grab this one and this one. M, merge at last. That was the last one selected, this middle one. Okay, so GG, just move that across. We could probably use an extra loop in here. What I might do is just hit two, and let's just slide this one up. GG. Like that. And add another one in here. Like that. Okay, so now we can just grab the knife tool, K, and just make quads from these. K. K like that. Okay, so it's a little bit sort of you know shifted across there. You could just take the slide tool and just slide these across. You now you can clean this up however you like. So that's that's done. That's ready to add the hole for the screw. So go ahead now and do all of the other ones. Just making sure that this edge is lined up. Same down here, making sure that the edge is lined up. And I'll meet you back in a moment and then we'll talk about sharpening. And welcome back. Hopefully you've gone through and added in all of those insets. I've also gone through and just selected various edges and just use loop tools space just to space things out. Just making sure the space on either side of these insets is fairly even. And also just, you know, loosening it up around these areas here. What we also want to do is come in and just quickly add a new cut in here, something we haven't done. And just go into vertex mode and just move these back just to round that out. Just something I forgot to do before. Okay, that's good. So next we'll go into face mode, select these ones, and we'll add in our holes. I for inset, just drag that in like that. E to extrude, G, Z, let's move that back, and X, delete faces. Okay, good, so now we have to add in the extrusion at the back, and you could go in and add the solidify modifier, but I'll show you the result of that. Let's drop that in. It definitely adds the faces, but it's really wonky. And I've gone through and played with all the settings. Maybe there's something I'm missing, but it just didn't give me an even result. And I used to get this kind of result too in Cinema 4D using extrude. So we're going to do this manually. So just get rid of that. And in edge mode, we're going to need to select these edges. Right across here to here. Okay, and we're going to extrude up to here. So E, and I'm just going to snap by holding down control. We're going to keep that contour. We're not going to straighten that out. Select this edge and this edge. Same again, E, right mouse button, and then snap. Grab this vert and this vert, and once again, snap. God, I love that snap feature in Blender. 
select all M, merge by distance, and four verts were removed. Excellent. Now we want to grab the knife tool, add in some cuts, just use E so we can continue to add cuts after each one, just pressing E. If you've watched some of my tutorials before this one, obviously this will be fairly repetitive. Select these, control X. This one and this one, control X, control R, click, right mouse button, just to lock that into the center. Three, control Alt, grab that beautiful loop there, and X, delete faces, and that's really sharp now and perfectly even. So now we're ready to start selecting some edges and use the bevel tool. Certain edges on this will be beveled and other ones will add loop cuts because some of them are sharper than others. I'm going to go through and do that manually. Just making sure I get just the edges that I want to add an edge on both sides to. Around here. And around here, this one as well actually, is going to be a little bit sharper. Probably want to get that one as well. I wonder if we do need that actually. Maybe we do, yeah. It'll make that topology a little better. This one, this one. These are rounded out, these corners, we don't want those. And just this other side. Like that. And here. Usually I forget at least one edge and have to bevel more than once. I think that's right. Okay, so let's go Control B. The bevel, bevel that out. Now, I've got mine set to one extra loop, and if you hold down P, you can change the shape to one so that gets that fully squared off. Just make sure the shape's set to one. That's probably enough. So why don't we go ahead now and just drop this into a sub D surface. making sure all the usuals are turned on, auto smooth, tab, right mouse button, shade smooth, shift space just to hide that. So it's looking good, isn't it? Look at that sharpness. It's a little bit of work to do. Tab, and in edit mode, we'll just make sure that edit mode is turned off for the sub D surface so we can see what we're doing. Okay, we want to put a loop around here, control R, Doesn't need to be quite as sharp as the other ones, that's why I'm only putting one loop. And in here, like that. Tab. Okay, that's looking good. Might just bring that up to two, just for a moment. Ah, looking good. Gonna quickly save. All right, now let's come and do these insets. We need to sharpen this corner as well. Control R, should go all the way around. We better check that it is going all the way around. Good, that means everything's tight. Let's put one on here as well, not too tight. And one at the front. And here, I'm gonna hit E and F, just to make sure that's even. That's pretty good. Let's also just quickly bevel in these ones. They're going to be a little bit tighter than the other ones we beveled. Control B. Like that. Now we won't put one on the inside here because that makes it a little bit too tight. Okay, let's take a look at that. Ah, okay. A little bit of pinching going on there. Let's just change our auto smooth, just bring that up to 
I like mine at about 80 most of the time. I think 30 is not enough. That looks much better. But this is molded, so it looks more convincing when it's not too tight. Very easy to over sharpen on these kinds of things. How's that rounding looking there? Let's just have a look in here. Tab. Let's just do a bit of work on this. GG, just slide that out. Maybe we could pull it out a bit. We don't want to mess up that too much. How does that look? It's still flat, that's good. And we maybe just want to just loosen up these as well. GG. GG. And these ones as well. GG. And lastly, these. Okay, seems okay now. It's not very even along here. I might just go into vertex mode. All right. PG. All right, I think that's going to work. Okay, so just a couple more steps to go. First of all, I just want to add a rim around the outside, and we can do that using a solidify modifier. And just increase the thickness, about 0 0.06 is good. And what we also want to do is check only rim. Love this little feature. And that puts a really nice even rim all the way around it. It has added a rim to these holes as well. What we'll do is we'll just drag it up above the solidify modifier and just apply that. It's got a tab first into object mode. And apply. And let's go through and we can delete these. Like that. That's really nice. It makes that so easy. I'm trying to do a bevel and have it act like this in Cinema 4D, I found was almost impossible. But Solidify seems to do it really quite evenly. It's, it seems to be quite intelligent. And having that only rim feature is fantastic. Okay, so just one more step, really. And this is optional. I just don't like when I'm sharpening my models, let's just see if I can get back to where I need to be. When I'm sharpening my models, adding loops all the way through and having them propagate all the way through. So it's just starting from the front here. Just make sure that auto merge vertices is on and vertex snap is on if you're using the vanilla method. And just with tweak, just holding down control and just snap and snap. And it's going to merge those. And just selecting this edge here, Control X. Now this does create a quad. It's not a really perfectly shaped quad. It will give us an okay result. It's quite clean. Just undo that. If you didn't want to have that quad sitting in this position, in this particular area, we'd have to add an extra loop in here, like this. And then we just do this. So that moves it away. Now we can control X that one and just GG this one into place. And now we can get a better shape. It's more of a diamond and it just keeps it away from this area here. But you can see it doesn't give us much of a difference. It doesn't make a whole hell of a lot of difference. So you can choose 
what you prefer. Sometimes that will be important, other times not so important. What I'm going to do is just quickly just snap these like this. Now you might want to use the polyquilt tool, it's up to you. I've already got these settings turned on, so I'll just quickly come through and snap. So go ahead and do that, and I'll meet you back in a moment. And welcome back. Let's just dissolve the unneeded edges now. Just control Xing our way through here. You can select them all and then just do it once if you want to. When I'm working at the bottom and I've selected something, I'm before I dissolve it, I always go to the top and make sure everything's that I want to be selected is selected. Okay, there's that one. Control X. That one and that one and that one. Control X. So that's got rid of all of those extra edge loops. And you see it's kept it nice and even around here. Imagine if we needed to add something through here and we had these loops coming through that were messing that up. So I think it's good practice, wherever you can, just to keep things as tidy as possible. Now I've left this extra loop through here, which I don't need anymore. So what I'll do is just go into vertex mode again. Just snap that one to there. And that one to there. And just get rid of that. Like that. Okay, so tabbing into object mode again. And that's looking pretty good. Might need just one more loop around in here. Like that. Yeah, that looks looking about right. Does that look okay there? Maybe maybe one more here too. Just in there. Okay, that looks good. Let's try a matte cap. Pretty clean. Good topology. And you know, quite low poly as well. Okay, so hopefully yours came out similar to mine. And um, you've got something out of that tutorial. So until next time, have fun, be creative, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.